Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm discovering I've always adopted adult cats before, and I'm discovering having a kitten is like having a baby. I'm just like not sleeping because she wants to like walk all over me. So, yeah. Hi, Have my cat be all right. <laughs> Oh, hey. I know we're all a little sleepy. Hopefully, today we'll wake us up a little more. Um, I have some active group activities y'all are going to do. So, um, a little more interactive today for sure. Uh, I'm going to start by doing attendance and then um, we'll look very briefly at psychology in the news related to careers. And then we actually have two in-class assignments. I'm not sure if we'll get them both done today. If we need to, we'll do another one on Friday. So. All righty, Destiny. Diego, Manny, Maria, Jasmine, John, Danny, Rita, uh, Jordan, Nyla, Kyle, Alexis, Joe, Sweetie is on Zoom, Taj, Demir, Nathan, I just saw him, Sebastian, uh, Connor, Michelle, Chandler, Casey, no Casey today, okay, um, Brooklyn, and Gabby. Awesome, thank you all. Like I said, we'll do this the first few weeks. And then I'll learn your names, I swear. <laughs> and it will go through again. Please don't take this as any kind of slight to you. It is my not great at this point. So, 
All righty. So I was looking this morning to see if there was anything about careers in psychology that had come out recently in the news. Um, and this wasn't technically like in the news, but it was a press release by the APA talking about this um, and thinking about, you know, how can uh, taking psychology classes uh, and learning psychology information help you to advance your career. Uh, so, you know, again, for some of you, this is your second week studying psychology, psychology math, right? Some of you have probably taken a class in high school or a 101 before. But if you had to guess, what skills do you think that psychology could help you learn? Yeah, for sure, how to run a business, yeah. Uh, elements of how you interact with people, right, really important, but also things like marketing savvy. Uh, Fortune 500 companies love psych majors because it sounds horrible, but through social psych, which we'll learn about this semester, we kind of know how to manipulate people, right? We know how to sell things, essentially, yeah. Other things you can think of. Yeah. The same way, it will be studying things that you don't know that it will be in a modern state of things. Exactly. Yeah. There are skills you learn and things you learn that'll just come to you randomly. And you're like, oh, I learned that, you know, my first year in 102. And now that's helping me. Yeah. And the knowledge is kind of along the same way. Some of the other skills would be things like um, ability to communicate effectively, which can go with running a business as well, right? Uh, empathy for other people, right? And then just basic knowledge about human nature. Now, does this mean that after you take 102, you can like go out and therapize your friends and family? Do not recommend. Um, <laughs> but it does mean that all your friends and family will be like, are you analyzing me right now? Um, my favorite question. I always just tell people, I'm off the clock. Nah. Um, but people love to think that you can magically figure them out because you took one psychology course. Alrighty, so let me show y'all where you can find the in-class assignments. So if you go to our Blackboard page, uh, home page, and then you go down the side, there'll be something that says in-class assignments. And we're gonna start with this one, which says who isn't in the history of psychology. Um, so let me see how many groups I made for this. I made five groups. Um, so let's go ahead. Oh, perfect. Okay. And have what you'll see is there's one for each group that has the same assignments and questions, but each of you can just type your answers in on this page. So let's have the four of y'all be group one and have the four of y'all be group two. Um, let's bring the five of y'all back here be group three. Um, have you three right here be group four. And then the three of you, you might have to like switch out a little bit and be group five. <laughs> So just go ahead, there's a link to a website where you can go and find out uh, about people we haven't talked about. And then there are just some questions that each group will answer. So please feel free to talk them through with your group members. Um, and then I'll check in as we go. And then Sadie, you can just kind of take a break from this since there's no one else on Zoom for you to work with. And while y'all are doing that, I'm gonna grab my laptop because I'm still doing some beginning of the semester stuff. So.
It's okay to talk out loud to each other, I swear. <laughs> Yeah, you know where it is. Yeah, go to go right across. You know, the school bought me my laptop. I'm going to get to all connections, but oh. Yep, exactly. Within your group, do the same person, but each group will hopefully choose a different person. You might not want to pick like the top person. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, good question. I was thinking pass, but if there's someone in the present who really sticks out to you, feel free. Find anything to about their sexuality. Yeah, some of them won't have info about certain things like their sexuality, so you can just leave that playing. Some of them it'll be really obvious. <laughs>
it looks like people are finishing up and it was in the dock. So I'm going to pull up everybody's responses up here. And then um, while I do that, everybody kind of confer with each other and say who's going to talk or if multiple of you want to talk. <laughs> um, I know sometimes that's like, oh, wait, shoot, who's going to be the one to read out our answers? So, alrighty. So, yeah, I included this activity because. As we've mentioned, we're talking about a bunch of usually male psychologists, right? Um, and there have been people, and male white psychologists, I should say, there have been people of color and there have been women um, and people of other gender identities for basically as long as psychology has been a thing working on this. Alrighty, so uh, group one, which psychologist did you choose? Yeah, and I've seen her speak. She's amazing. She's great. All righty. So she's female and white, got her PhD in 1965. What was her major contributions to the field? Um, she wrote a promotion called the Psychology of Education, but she gathered the work with hers as well as other experiences about attitudes of living issues. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it seems weird. But for a long time, we didn't do research on people who weren't white, straight males. <laughs> um, there's a very uh, famous book in psychology called Even the Rat Was White, talking about the history of racism within psychology. It could have been called Even the Rat Was White and Male, um, where we just did research on men for a really long time and started to be like, yeah, that applies to all people. And like, sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So Alex Equity is one of the folks who really got us thinking about, wait, are there differences, right? Related to how women are raised and how that affects things. Alrighty, group two, who was your person? Just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So she's female and Asian. Got her PhD in two thousand three. And what are her contributions to the field? Yeah, so these are just the theories her researchers couched it, right? Yeah, which, yeah. But yeah, so here's someone who's focusing on sex, a taboo subject, right? But um, we know that psychologically, a lot of stress and things going on in our lives can affect our sexual health and our sexual satisfaction. We also know that if our sex life is out of whack with what we want it to be, that can affect our lives as well. So she is someone who is looking at some of these other things and how those relate um, which is, you know, again, really important and something that hasn't necessarily been studied in the past. Alrighty, group three, who did you find? All righty, so female African-American, got her PhD in 1988, and what were her major contributions? Yeah, exactly. Great, fine. So here's someone who's saying, okay, we need to look at not just men versus women, but also look at how race plays into it. Um, and then using narratives and interviews doesn't sound like that should be novel, right? Um, but I think partially in reaction to some of the early work uh, that was done in the field, uh, people for a long time 
really push back on just like case studies or interviews uh, being the source of knowledge because they wanted to be more scientific. They wanted to have questionnaires. And, uh, you know, as you see from her and then other modern scholars, there is now a big movement to go back to, no, we do need to be talking to people and hearing things in their own voices, right? And that that is really important. So uh, she was one of the people who started to push for that. Alrighty, group four, who was your, for your person here? Alrighty, uh, straight, female, white, got her PhD back in 1925, which it was hard to get a PhD as a woman or a person of color in 1925, which sounds again like crazy because that was only a hundred years ago, but true. Alrighty, and what are what were her major contributions to the field? Um, she studied a lot of like masculinity, femininity, like living one person and how it's like not really like this or that, but more of a part of the spectrum. Um, and she did that for her dissertation got her dissertation for her PhD and it was like it was the second series of a study that had already been done but she like completed it like did the second version of it uh, that got me nice yeah so yeah and that's really important is sometimes we need to pick up on research that's been abandoned by others or replicate it to make sure the results still hold uh, and how great that a hundred years ago people were starting to realize like, you don't just have all masculinity, all or all femininity. There can be a little bit of both in everybody. Um, and I love this underlying message was that to achieve good mental health, one sex must dictate one's gender in both thought and behavior. And that could intertwine in lots of interesting ways. Alrighty, group five, who was your psychologist? <laughs> All right, so she got her PhD in 1937, um, and she was female and American. And what were her major contributions to the field? <laughs> yeah. So one of the things we'll learn throughout the semester, again, if you haven't really delved into psychology before, is psychology likes to come up with really fancy words that mean really simple things. Psychometric is a fancy word for, like, assessment. How do we figure out what's going on with people, basically? Yeah, so here's someone who, uh, UNC Chapel Hill is a very prestigious university, right? So got some job there. First female president of a psychological society big deal. Um, there are still <laughs> realms within psychology and other fields where we like haven't had our first female or first African-American uh, president of things, which is like mind-blowing, right? Um, even give you an example, it's not psychology, but here on campus, Dr. Larkin became our provost about three years ago now, I think. And even though this university was founded in the 60s, she was our first female provost, um, which just is like a little mind boggling. Like, how did it take that long to get somebody in a position like that? All right, great job on that. So um, yeah, let's stick with the same groups. If you came in late, just sort of join a group. Um, and there is another assignment. If you go to Blackboard right underneath and it's the careers in psychology scavenger hunt. Um, so there are more uh, there are more groups than we have here. I've had like really big classes before. So um, just do the same groups, one through five. And again, there's going to be a website link you follow. Once you get in there, uh, it won't be, what? This link totally works this morning. Hang on just a sec. No, there we go. Like literally 20 minutes ago, this link worked. All right, <laughs> give me just a second. I'll update the link. <sighs> Is the link working for anybody or are you all getting this error page? Oh. 
Give me just a sec to see if maybe I just like copied it wrong. Science of psychology. This is, ugh. okay. I wonder if they're doing like site maintenance. <laughs> Let's see what we find. Apologies, guys. I've literally never had this happen with this website before. All right, let me try one more thing. APA.org slash action. Maybe I can just get to it that way. Okay, well, this will get us there, even though it's not the original link. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to copy and paste this link at the top, uh, rather than go through and recopy and paste it in each group's directions. So if you go to the top, that will work and get you to the page you were going to go through before, um, where each group subfield, you just click in, and um, then it should give you all the information that you need to answer the questions. Jeez. So again, I'll give you all 10, 20 minutes, whatever you need to fill this out. Um, and again, go up to the top and that's where the link that's working, you know, uh, the other one was working 20 minutes ago. Uh, so I literally checked it right before class. Uh, and I'll go through and while you're working, actually correct it throughout the assignment. So yeah, same thing, talk through it with your group members. They literally changed the URL like this morning. Cool. <laughs> we'll make it work, right? <laughs>
have the film in between and which I can just use my already favorite. Looks like folks are doing pretty well. Give you all two, three more minutes to finish up here. A couple of people still typing, so I'm going to give it just another minute and then I'll stand up. So we'll talk through this like we did the last one. Did they take away that section? Yeah. There used to be a research and action section, and they probably, again, when they updated everything this morning, took away that section. So if it doesn't have it, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, I literally checked this right before I walked over. And so they must be doing some sort of update to their server as we speak. Well, at least we can go through some of this. Uh, and if you notice, uh, I did not have y'all do clinical or counseling because I think a lot of people already kind of have a gist for what that's like, right? Um, but I wanted you all to get a feel for some of the other subfields. All right, so group one, you had brain science and cognitive psych. Um, and so what did you learn about the subfield from the understanding section? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So these folks do um, some pretty technical research sometimes. Um, where they're working with folks within brain scan machines, having them do activities. All right, so we're just going to skip all these. Um, so what can you do if your degree is in this subfield? It's like. Um, I'm here to a career in like university setting where you can teach or like research. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, they might be like me where they're teaching in a place like this and doing research. Or um, sometimes they'll be at a university that's got a medical school and they'll be associated with that medical school um, teaching there. All right. How do you become someone who works in this field? Um, you know, with the master's or doctoral degree, 
Yep, exactly. Yeah, so not all of these subfields will require you to go this route, but if you really want to do research in things like brain science, you do have to get like a master's basically, and then you can go on to get a doctorate if you want to lead your own research lab. Um, and then this is probably one of the higher earning uh, bases for uh, psychology. So, um, you know, maybe uh, six figures right away. Great, awesome, right? Um, and maybe a little lower, but this is still a pretty good, especially if this is your starting salary, pretty sweet. Alrighty, thank you, group one. Group two, tell us about the understanding section about climate and environmental psychology. <laughs> Exactly. And this is a growing subfield, maybe not surprisingly, because climate science is uh, becoming more and more relevant to people's mental health, right? Um, and so what can you do with the degree that focuses here? Exactly. So these folks are much more likely to be out in what we call like the applied fields of psychology um, rather than, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> you got to get degrees in it, right? So there are people teaching it, but they're going to be working for NGOs, nonprofits. Um, I'm sure there are people who have this degree working at the EPA, for example. Uh, and with that becomes um really interesting set of job responsibilities. And then how do you get there? Exactly. And so again, I think probably getting a master's degree to specialize could be good. And then if you really want to um, and be doing research or be able to write grants for people, getting that actual degree can be great. Um, and again, 90K, not a shabby salary, right? All right, developmental psychology. Uh, group three, what does the understanding section say about developmental? Exactly. Um, it looks like you all did have some research in action, so that's great. Looking at the difference between learning styles and babies and adults, love that. Um, and then what can you do with a degree in developmental? Exactly, yeah. So working with kiddos who might be on the spectrum or have something like cerebral palsy, uh, you can also work with kids who are struggling in a whole host of ways. Um, and as you all pointed out, you typically need a doctoral degree. And here you're going to see more of a range. This is something really interesting that happens not only within psychology, but other career fields, is that what we've seen over time is that as more people who are not your typical psychologist. So more women, more people of color, more people of LGBTQ plus status, more first gen folks enter a field. Um, particularly developmental tends to be dominated by female psychologists. There's something that happens called the feminization of the field where you don't make as much because people think, oh, Women aren't as prestigious, women aren't blah, blah, blah. There's really interesting psychology around thinking about masculine and feminine things. Give you a silly example. More people are harmed by female named hurricanes because they're less likely to evacuate. Because they're like, oh, this female hurricane's not gonna hurt me, <laughs> right? And so there's really interesting things so like the human brain does with that stuff. So yeah, um, maybe not as high as some of the other subfields because of that. Alrighty, group four. Uh, what does it say about experimental psychology? 
Um, they do a lot of like theoretical questions and like experimenting on people in their field to like answer a question as to how people react. Um, and an example of research and action is like working in various settings with different people, um, like prior to the stage, and using their background um, to like improve things, but also like seeing like, like what are the questions we can answer to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then what can you do with this degree? Um, psychologists that like have degrees and stuff, they kind of work across a lot of fields, um, mostly like universities that are doing research and stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that was it. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you're getting an experimental degree, you're typically going to be working in some place that has funding for research. More and more, there are centers for research. So even, for example, with on my field, which you think I study eating disorders, you think, oh, that's clinical. You need to be in like a health center setting or a university. There are actually like nonprofit organizations that are being set up just to do research on eating disorders because it's so vital. And because unfortunately, our subfield doesn't get a lot of governmental funding for this. Um, all right, so how do you make it happen? Um, we have bachelor's degree, and most of the time we have to have a strong background in the math as well as Yeah. Um, and then, like, get our internship or like a job in the lab, but most people go back to get their master's and then eventually they talk to it. Exactly, yeah. So a lot of people will start off either helping out in the lab of one of their professors in undergrad, or you get a job working in a lab right out of undergrad, and then you might be motivated to go back to get additional training. And again, salary going to be a little higher here um, because you have folks working with sort of the more hard science aspect of thing. All right, group five, thinking about health psych, what does the understanding section say about this subfield? Well, health psychology is basically like the psychological and biological Exactly. Yeah. This is another really growing subfield of psych. Um, as more and more we're realizing the mind and body are really interconnected and psychologists are integrated into medical settings. Alrighty, and then what can you do with this degree? <laughs> okay, I could read this one. Um, so measuring the impact of behavior, creating ways to help people make good behavioral choices. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of prevention in health side, as well as treatment. And then uh, pretty similar, a lot of these folks will get a doctoral degree. Um, really interestingly, there are a few doctoral programs that focus specifically on health side. A lot of times what people will do is they'll go get a degree in clinical psych and then from that specialize in health psychology. So even though I didn't technically specialize in health psych, I got a lot of health psych experience because again, it's really popular. So I worked in, let me give you some examples. I did rounds in the hospital where we would see everyone who came in for a psychological issue or with drugs or alcohol in their bodies. Uh, I worked with folks who were pre-surgical getting assessed to undergo bariatric surgery, which is what they used to call stomach stapling. Uh, I worked in an HIV AIDS clinic. I worked in an MS clinic. I worked in a breast cancer clinic. I rounded on a spinal cord injury unit. I worked with folks in blind rehab. I worked with folks in med rehab. So they often had like cardiac events or like a hip replacement, something along those lines. Oh, and one of my favorites um, was I was part of a multidisciplinary team that assessed veterans with traumatic brain injuries. That's uh, unfortunately the signature injury of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars from all the improvised explosive devices. So it was like me, a neurologist, a social worker, and a nurse would all see them together, which is really cool. Yeah, you can earn about 80K a year, again, depending on where you end up. You might earn, end up earning more. 
Um, I mentioned the VA, these folks are also getting integrated into private hospital systems. Um, and then I'm not gonna go through the other ones in a ton of detail, but just know there are other aspects. So human factors is another place where you can make a lot of money as a psychologist. Uh, these people work on how humans interact with technology. Um, so for example, there are human factors engineers who work at Fitbit, right? And they're working with how do you best make technology like that work for people. IO is probably where you can make the most money as a psychologist. You would be working in uh, business settings, uh, often doing research to try to help to make the business more effective. And then social is gonna be pretty similar um, to developmental wherein you're gonna be more in a university setting doing research, although some of these folks will also work for nonprofits. Alrighty, we'll have just a couple slides for this to cover on Friday, uh, and then we will move on to our next lecture. Thanks for participating. We'll do more of these throughout the semester. Hopefully it makes it a little more interesting. And thanks for hanging with me when the website is <laughs> Thank you. 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 You would have to pay. But the nice thing is that's your book. So okay. you don't have to buy a book cover. No, my the book. That's did it come with a cover? It did not. Okay. Yeah. So just return the book and then just use the connect. Okay. Yeah, right. Hey. Uh-huh. Oh no. No, so you should be able to like sort of buy the book and connect together online. Um, I put on, if you go to the connect section of our Blackboard page, I put their tech support info on there. So feel free to contact them because they don't even let me like help you technically. So like they don't give me that ability. I thought I could still use my connects or that yeah, they'll make you buy a different code yeah. for each book, which is annoying. <laughs> so yeah, if you just buy it through the website, I mean, again, it's something like $90, but it's much cheaper than like, if you buy the book, I think it's 300. So yeah, unfortunately, but that is also your book. So it's not a separate fee, at least. <laughs> You're welcome. I just wanted to apologize for being late. I was getting some uh, visa stuff with my DSO. Oh, uh, so okay. My, yeah, just my visa and whatnot. So no I'm glad you're getting that all straight out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of that. Because honestly, I was like, what's the difference between the smartphone and the computer service? Because like, I'm like doing whatever he's showing up for me to do. You're probably doing it well. Um, the smart book is just basically where it has you read while you're going through. Here we go. Let me get to the connect assignments. So yeah, if you're just going through these in order, yeah. you're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's like right. there are different type of assignment basically. The other ones tend to be pretty short. The smart book will maybe longer. Okay. So. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I emailed you yesterday. Well, yeah, I emailed you yesterday. Um, so I was supposed to be here on the front but yeah, but I was. Yeah, so this is probably similar to what I was saying. Have you bought your Connect code yet? No, I, I ordered the book that got one to 10 years. Okay, yeah, probably the easiest way to do it is you look at the syllabus and I don't have a paper about Yeah. Um, here we go. So on here, there's a couple different ways to buy it. So you can do just the code um, through the bookstore, or you can just buy it directly through Connect. I think that's the cheapest way. Um, it still is like $97, but it's the book and your access for all the assignments. So I don't, you, don't, you don't need to. <laughs>
So all the good diamonds would be like in this. Exactly. Room. And so it won't let you access them unless you sign up for the free trial or you buy the, the code. So like everything that I like missed sort of you'll be fine yeah so one of the things you'll see when you read through my syllabus is i don't um take any points from it if anything's late because i know y'all are human and have lives so. yeah. yeah i'm still trying to figure everything out yep no that's fine and please uh feel free to stop by like the 